خاتم نبی امام مرسلین ولا علیہ وصحب وسلم سلیم اکثیرہ رب اشرح لی صدری و اسلی امری و احلو لکتا تامی لسانی یفقہ و قولی اللہم صلی علی سیدنا محمد ولا علیہ وصحب وسلم تسلیم صلاة تفتح لنا ابواب الردا و تیسیر و تغلق بها ابواب الشر و تاثیر انت مولانا فنیم مولا و نعم نصیر انشاءاللہ ہم موان تو سیکشن ٹوینٹی سورة النمل ورس سکسٹی آل دوی تو سورة الانکبوت ورس فورٹی فور Surat Al-Naml continues by speaking of many signs in creation, showing the Creator and challenges the unbelievers with the repeated question, Are there gods along with Allah? This is followed by talk of some of the frightening scenes on the Day of Judgment, whilst clarifying that it is a day of total justice. So the Day of Judgment is called Yawm al It's a day of justice. It is a day of recompense. So what you've earned... That is what you will receive according to me. So you reap what you sow. So if somebody says it's not fair and you know people shouldn't be treated like this, shouldn't be going into the hellfire and if God is merciful and if God is just and why is he allowing this to happen? The simple fact of the matter is that when somebody does a bad action, then they are punished for it. And somebody does a good action, they are rewarded for it. It's as simple as this. If you are driving on a road and you're sticking to the speed limit, you are not going to get a fine. You are not going to get flushed. If you don't run a red light, you are not going to get flushed. But somebody who is speeding, people expect them to get pulled over by the police. People expect them to get flushed. People expect them to receive a fine through the post. But everybody's okay with that. But when it comes to the greatest test in life, which is to stay away from all that which has been prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then people suddenly develop a moral compass to say, no, 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 even the bad ones should be treated like, you know, they should be rewarded for their actions. It doesn't work like that. When you go to school, when you go to college, when you go to university, if you do not revise for your examinations, you fail. And that is the same thing what occurs on the day of judgment. If you have not revised for your exam, you are not going to pass the exam. And then why should you be rewarded with a first? Why should you be rewarded with an A star? On that day, the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you are given exactly what you worked for. So if you worked for good, then you are given the good. If you worked for that which is bad, then you are given that which is bad. The next surah is Surah Al-Qasas, which is the third in the series of Taseen surahs that are all about prophets. The surah completes the discussion of the previous two surahs by focusing on different stories in the life of one prophet, Prophet Musa alayhi salam. The surah revolves around the theme of truth and falsehood and the theme of submission and rebellion. These themes are discussed through the prism of the life of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. We are told of his life story from birth up, to, up until his selection as a prophet. So, when people discuss about you know what book can I read to learn about the heaven what book can I read to learn about hell what can I do to learn about this story that story this part of my life that part of my life and the answer is simple if you want to learn about any area you have to open up the Quran that is the only book that we need however people don't want to read these they want to read all types of other books they will read PDFs and you know, whatever comes their way, social media posts. But when it comes to reading the one thing that is there as a divine guidance, which will be relevant in every single century that occurs, people don't want to read that. But when you do read it, you need to be reading it with a correct translation. It needs to be translated by somebody with correct Akida. Otherwise, the translation will lead you to misguidance, which is why you need to be very, very careful about Thus the surah begins with the oppression of Fir'aun and immediately moves on to the divine plan in saving Prophet Musa alayhi salam from the murderous intent of Fir'aun. We are then told of how he was raised in the household of Fir'aun, how as a young man he killed an Egyptian and then had to flee for his life and his marriage to the daughter of Shu'ayb alayhi salam. He is then appointed as a prophet and returns to Egypt calling for the salvation of his people. So everybody has a plan. Everybody tries to achieve something. Everybody has a goal. I want this for my children. I want that for my son. I want that for my daughter. I want him to do this at this particular moment. I want my daughter to do this at this particular moment. But it's not for you to decide. 
you are not the one who's pulling the strings. The one who's pulling the strings is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will bring your children to the path and to that goal when he deems fit. Not when you deem fit. It is not for you. You as a parent, you as an older brother, you as an older sister, your only goal is to just advise. Be there, give sincere counsel, keep advising, keep advising. It's Allah who is the one who is going to turn their hearts. But if you come in like somebody with an iron fist and you try to say, no, you must do what I say right now. It may just be that you turn them away. The example that we saw in the Ashifa yesterday, when the, the Bedouin Arab said to the Prophet ﷺ, you haven't been just to me. And then the Sahaba wanted to attack him straight away. How dare you speak to the Prophet of Allah ﷺ like that? And the Prophet ﷺ, what did he do? He went inside to his home, he took something and called him in and gave him even more. And then said to him, go out. Because he made dua for the Prophet ﷺ. Then he said, go out and tell the rest of my companions exactly what you have just done now. Because it may just be that they want to harm you because of the harm that you've caused me with your mouth. And then the Prophet ﷺ, what does he compare it to? He compares it to the owner of a she-camel. The she-camel is not tied up and it runs away. When it runs away, the people all run after it to try and apprehend it for the man who owns it. And they are shouting, they're screaming, you know, just causing all sorts of a ruckus. And what happens? The she-camel gets even more frightened and shy and carries on running away. And it doesn't come back. But the Prophet ﷺ is saying that the one who owns the she-camel is the one who should go and bring it back. And how does he do it? He goes and he puts some fodder there for it and, you know, treats it with kindness and says, come back. And then the she camel recognizes its owner and politely comes back to its owner. And that is the example that the Prophet ﷺ uses, that if you go all guns blazing at people, say goodbye. Say goodbye. Because what did he say? He says, if you went for him, you would have killed him and he would have been in the hellfire. But because you, I stopped you and I treated him with love and patience, he changed his heart and Alhamdulillah he found salvation. That is the difference in dealing with people. You can attract more flies with honey than with vinegar as the saying goes. If you're going to be harsh with people, they're going to turn away. The Prophet wasallam, he was not harsh with his community. And what happens on the day of the Fatih Makkah, which was last yesterday, well, today in the English calendar, but yesterday in the Islamic terms, we see that everyone on the day of the conquest of Makkah, they all become Muslim. Why? Because the Prophet of Allah was patient with them. When the incident happens in Ta'if, the Prophet could have easily said to the angels of the mountains, crush them in between. But the Prophet said, no, it may be that from their progeny, righteous people come forth. So now when you as an older brother, as an older sister, as a mother, as a father, if you are trying to guide your youth, be patient. Be patient. You advise. You advise. You keep on advising. You never tire of advising. But you do it with hikmah. You do it with wisdom. You do it with love. You do it with honey. Because if you do it with vinegar, they're gone. They're not going to come back. If you give up on your children, they're not going to come back. You need to be firm, you need to carry on making dua for them and inshallah you will see the crux of it. So here Allah has a plan and this is the plan that you see here. He says Fir'aun I'm going to kill all of the children so no one can come out against me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan was what? That he the one who is going to overthrow you and empty you out, turn it all away from you. He is the one who's going to be raised in your very own home. Those are the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The surah tells us, as a second story, the story of Karun, who was a right-hand man of uh, Fir'aun, the cousin of Musa alayhi salam, who exulted in the unbelievable wealth he had, denying it as being from Allah and not paying any heed to the advice he was given. Some wished for his wealth, but others warned him. Eventually, he died in an earthquake and he and all his wealth disappeared into the earth. The surah ends by giving guidance on attaining the ways of truth. And that is the reality of wealth. 
the, this wealth that we have, this life that we have, is dissipating, is, is fleeting away. So don't waste all your time and your energy stacking up money, stacking up money. If you waste your time doing this, you've wasted your life. Spend some of that money in the way of Allah. Spend some of that money on your family. Take a break. Have a relaxing time. Enjoy yourself with your family. Enjoy yourself with your children. If you are working all the time and your children never get to see you, what good is your wealth? Who's going to raise your children then? In our time, it was MTV. In this time now, it's social media which is raising your children. So you need to be very careful because you are not going to take your wealth with you. What's going to benefit you is your children. So work on them. The section ends with the beginning of the first of a series of four surahs that begin with the symbolic letters Alif Lam Mim, Surah Al Ankabut. Now here, this is what we call the Haruf al Qata'a. These are the broken letters that the Quraysh. This was a challenge to them that you are masters of Arabic. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mocks them, he ridicules them, that you are masters of grammar, of Arabic, tell us the meaning of these broken letters, the Alif Lamin, the Taha, all of these, if you are truthful in yourself, Yasin, tell us the meaning of it. So this was something which angered them even more, because they couldn't come to an explanation with it. This is also the final surah that was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu in Mecca. The surah deals with the issues of faith and the normal pattern of tests that all believers must faith, face. It also introduces a new front of opposition to the believers, namely the hypocrites, who they had no experience of in Mecca, but will shortly face in Medina. The surah begins with a blunt question posed to all believers. Do people believe they will be left alone on saying we believe without being tested? Surah Surah 29 verse 2. Then comes a description of the hypocrites, a people who when faced with difficulty change completely. Then we are told of prophets who face unbelievable persecution, yet remained firm. Thus we are told that Nu alayhi salam remained calling his people for 950 years. And this is, there's a difference of opinion here. Some say 300 years, some say that he lived with them for 1050 years. There's a difference of opinion, but that's a discussion for another day. And we are told of the struggles of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Lut and Shuwayb alayhi salam. We are then reminded that all deniers are destroyed through different modes of punishment due to their sins. The section ends with a parable describing the nature of rejection being as flimsy as a spider's web. So just as a spider's web, you can just put your hand through it and that will be the end of it. It's the same thing. When you are rejecting the true faith that is coming your way, the guidance that is coming your way, it is flimsy, it is a false premise which can just be wiped away just with the, with the swiping of the hand. So when we say on this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you think you are going to be claimed that you are believers and you are not going to be tested, think again. If you claim that you are believers, you will be tested. You will face trials and hardships. But it's only the ones who are successful by being patient and supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praying, they are the ones who will find the felicity in the end, inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who find felicity.